when you start focusing on the technology, what is the technology of Bitcoin? It's peer-to-peer decentralized money. It's that I can own a billion US dollar worth of an asset in my brain. That's the technology. And when I have that fiat liquidity and I add the technology to it, then what I call, I get double happiness. I get the biggest bull market that we've ever seen. Because the global bond market is however many umpteen trillions. If those investors start questioning the premise that bonds are volatility reducing on a portfolio level and that governments will do, well, governments can do what it take to maintain the bond market's purchasing power in energy terms, then holy fuck, like the, the sky is limited on where Bitcoin, tech stocks, any of these farmland, you know, Patek Philippe watches, whatever it is that you want to want to view, it's just going to all go nuts because people have, there's so much money in bonds. If people lose faith in the bond market and this fiat artificial construction that we've created over the last 80 to 100 years, this global economy and how it's been structured, if we lose confidence in that, then the amount of money that's going to be looking for an alternative is going to be something that we've never seen before. According to cryptocurrency expert Arthur Hayes, the upcoming bull market is poised to be the most substantial one ever witnessed in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the broader crypto sphere. Hayes attributes this prediction to his belief that the U.S. government and central bank find themselves in a predicament after extensively printing money and accumulating significant debt. This has led to a situation where continual money printing becomes necessary just to service the interest on the existing debt, creating a concerning economic spiral. Hayes extrapolates this scenario into a future where fiat currency consistently loses value against cryptocurrencies. In line with this perspective, he forecasts that Bitcoin will achieve a new all-time high by the close of 2024. Going further, Hayes envisions Bitcoin's ascent continuing reaching a range between $750,000 to $1 by 2026. For those unfamiliar with Arthur Hayes, he is a seasoned figure in the crypto space, having founded BitMEX, a prominent cryptocurrency exchange. With a track record of over a billion dollars in crypto market gains and more than a decade of experience in both crypto and financial markets, Hayes provides insights into how he expects the market cycle to unfold in the latter part of the video. So for the first time in human history, we have, we the people have a way out of this situation. We have a source of money that's divorced from the government that's weightless. So obviously there's gold. Um, gold's been around for 10,000 years as a monetary instrument. The problem with gold is, is it weighs a lot. And it's very conspicuous, right? Try hauling around a million US dollars worth of gold. Someone's going to see that you got that gold. And that's a problem. Versus Bitcoin, I can remember my private key in my head. No one knows how much Bitcoin I have. And no one can prove how much Bitcoin I have. Only I can demonstratively sign a message to say, yes, I control this address that has this amount of Bitcoin at this particular point in time. This is revolutionary because now we, the people, have a way to save outside of the fiat system and in a way that's not observable. And so we can say, okay, right. Anyone who recognizes this, this intractable, intractable position that all the, US, all the governments around the world are in, great, I'm not going to participate in this anymore. I'm not going to keep my money in a bank or just play around in the fiat stock market. I'm going to sell my fiat and purchase a hard monetary asset. And I'm going to keep it myself and exit into this crypto ecosystem, right? And now there's money coming out of the system leaking into another store of value because we now have a way out. And so if the, the denominator of amount of fiat and the situation, sorry, the numerator is getting this massive number of all this fiat and the denominator of Bitcoin stays the same, you know, Ethereum is deflationary and some of the other um, major uh, tokens or coins, right? It's fixed supply, some of them then the price has to go up in fiat terms. Now, does it go up in energy terms? That's another question. But at least in, in fiat terms, these things mathematically should go up because there's just so much fiat in the world because all this debt has to be um, printed. No, all this money has to be printed to service this debt. So I think we're at this fortunate situation that we actually have a way out because if we didn't, then the money's just stuck in the banking system. And essentially what happens is all of a sudden you have a banking holiday and they say, well, you can no longer move your money outside the banking system and you can only buy government bonds. The yield, whatever the yield, tough shit. Well, now we have crypto. We can get out of this situation as, as ordinary citizens of the world. And so we have all of these promises made, whether it's military or to the old, um, that are coming due all right now. And the politicians are unwilling to say, you know what, 
We made those promises back in the day. Things have changed. Therefore, what you thought you were going to get, that's going to be different now and much less, right? We don't have that conversation anywhere in the world. It's, I'm going to be able to make good on the promises made to you, whether that's militarily, whether that's healthcare, whether that's the banking system. And so Bitcoin and gold are starting to say, well, okay, well, these guys aren't serious. We're going to have to make them serious. Either it's, we're not going to own these bonds anymore. Right? So if I'm a, a large bondholder at the margin and I'm hearing the leader of America, the largest you know, of the American empire say, we can afford all these different wars in all these peripheral locations and we're not going to fight inflation, like Powell's on pause. Fuck it. I'm not owning this stuff. I want something that actually is going to preserve value. If this is really, truly a, a wartime, a uh, global wartime economy, then I want gold. Uh, now we have this new thing called Bitcoin. I want that too. And we've seen that. I posted a chart, I think yesterday. It was TLT, which is the long-term US Treasury uh, bond ETF versus Bitcoin. I had one date starting in, I think, February 24th of 2022 when Russia invaded Ukraine. Bitcoin's up something like 50% from that date. Treasuries are the TLT is down something like 17%. And then from October 7th till the present, Bitcoin's up something like, I don't know, 24, 25%, whatever it is. Treasuries are down 3%, right? So the standard playbook of shit's going bad, must invest in America because it's the strongest uh, and best in the best financial position, that is breaking down. Now it's, we have these other things. We have this Bitcoin thing. It's a global thing. Everybody can participate. It's not tied to a particular government. It's weightless. It's unobservable. I want that. I want to protect my capital. Let me have some of that. I don't want any of this U.S. Treasury bond nonsense when, you know, U.S. government's going to get themselves into wars all over the world and still make good on the promises to the old people. That's just not sustainable. So we're seeing this narrative starting to shift. We're seeing the correlations start to change. The stock bond correlation has changed. Bonds are no longer this thing that can reduce the overall volatility of a portfolio, which tells you at some point, all these Muppets running these 60, 40 portfolios are going to wake up and realize, holy fuck, I own this 40% in bonds. It has not performed. Fucking the US 30 year treasury is down 50% over the last three years. Yet these Muppets yeah, are nuts. still buying this stuff, right? It's just, it's absolutely hilarious. And, but at some point, their clients are going to stop, you know, giving these idiots money and saying, well, wait a minute. You said bonds are supposed to be this sort of anti fragile asset that's going to protect my portfolio. Why you keep buying these things that are just getting crushed again and again and again as the situation has changed. And that is propelling money at the margin now. And it's just starting, right? Bitcoin's only at 35,000, right? It's still, you know, only half its way to the 70,000 peak. Gold's only at 2,000. It still hasn't taken out some of the highs and uh, maybe it's close to the highs in 2011. But, it, you know, it's, it's not doing amazing, but it's doing better than owning bonds. And so as people start to realize this and finally get it through their heads that it's changed, the relationships have changed. I need something that's in fixed supply. I need something that is not someone else's liability. Then this, this movement in Bitcoin and gold and you know Ethereum and all these other assets, it's just going to collect steam because the global bond market is humongous. If the zeitgeist changes that this is not the best place to put my or you know, my investor's capital, I need to find something else. It's going to go into my opinion, AI tech stocks and crypto. So there's always going to be the new, new thing. So if you're, you know, last cycle, it was all these L1 blockchains that were going to be faster than Ethereum and they cater to some particular ecosystem, right? The Solanas, the Aptoses and, you know, all that dog shit, right? And, and so most of those, you get one shot, right? They had the one massive pump in 2021 and now everyone's like well you actually didn't really do very much and so you're not going to pump again to your all-time high so i do believe in that sequence of bitcoin first then eth then everything else now obviously at maelstrom we play along all the cycles right we want to invest in quality infrastructure and we want to invest in dog shit meme coins like we're trying to make money here right and and so like if you want to think about what's going to happen at the end of the the risk sector it's got to be something new whatever it is the new narrative you know i've put out there this this ai crypto narrative and you know i have a stake in filecoin and a mining company and 
business, other things like that. It could be some particular type of Web3 gaming. It could be some particular type of way that we do social graphs um, on Web3. I don't know, but we'll see the zeitgeist change of what people are actually focusing on and new projects that are unproven well, at the end of the cycle, say, oh my God, there's so many people in crypto. Look at all the wallets created. We're going to have all these clients. They're going to do all this stuff. And it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. This is really great. Let's go. And, and these tokens are going to pump. And again, they'll get crushed just like everything else because consumer adoption is hard. Getting people to change ingrained behaviors is hard. And so, yes, I think it was going to play out much the same as the last cycle. It's just that the types of things that we believe are going to be the next game changers is just going to change. I've, there will always be cycles. The length in time, I have no idea. I think a lot of that has Bitcoin and crypto as a reaction to what's going on in the, the trad five fiat world. Now, obviously governments usually refinance themselves every three to five years. So you kind of have a three to five year credit cycle. Will that, are we going to somehow have some massive event which completely changes our belief in how economics and government finances should be done? like Keynes after World War II. If there's a World War III, is there going to be some economists that we all say, oh no, this is the way we need to organize the world economy, wherever that situation is. And then the imbalances that build up in that system are going to lead to some sort of multi-year cycle in some way, shape or form. I don't know, but there will be a cycle, the length. I think trying to fix it, it'll always be this many years is, is just a recipe to get wrecked because the market's going to do exactly the opposite.